Club Matters. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lee Honish, Andrew Labashe, Miguel Antonio Barragan, bringing you the wonderful world of boxing. We do it each and every week. First of all, thank you, everybody who listened to the year-end show and all of you that have clicked and subscribed to get new podcasts and new videos delivered directly to you. Click the like, subscribe, share, whatever it is you have to do. But since most of you are above the age of 40 and have gotten laid, everything I just said is probably foreign to you. Probably. Just saying it out loud. As we do each and every week, quick check-in. Uh, we will start with the Grand Master of it all, Andrew Labache. How was your New Year's vacation, Andrew? Ah, very good. Stood around town. Matter of fact, we had two turns, Lee, to get home. Two turns. So it was a very good New Year's. And Miguel is our correspondent in Las Vegas. Andrew's in the Bay Area. Uh, how was COVID for you last week? Uh, it was horrendous. Um, they basically did not allow me to have my um, New Year's celebration. It's like the first New Year's I've had off in like three years, and then I catch the Rona. It's like, oh, crap. At first, it's like, okay, I don't know. I just feel it feels like a regular ass cold, right? Nothing spectacular. I take over the counter cold stuff, right? And then I start to feel a little bit better, and I'm like, wait a second. I can't smell or taste anything. Uh oh. So I should probably go get tested. So when I go get tested, of course, that confirms it. Uh, so I'm basically quarantining myself. Um, I, I feel better. Like I just, you know, have a little bit of a little phlegm, but it's like very mild. Uh, so it's just, you know, waiting for the taste and the sense of smell to come back. But it totally put like the major kibosh on my uh, New Year's <laughs> plans. I bet. Uh, for those of you watching this or listening, uh, our website is boxingtonight. Io. Click the links down below. Click to learn more. Whatever you see around, or go to the site boxingtonight.io to keep up on the latest news and schedules in the world of boxing, and of course, episodes of Fight Net Radio. I went to the Charger game in the new black hole, Andrew. It's a lot like the old black hole, Andrew, and it's not real safe for people to wear anything but black. <laughs> yeah, the that's, black hole. That's a lie. Don't lie to people, Lee. It's not, there was a bar after the game with Charger fans sitting in it and some women in tears, dude. I learned the tribal customs because I killed a Raider fan on the way into the stadium and stole his clothing. Um, I actually sat in season seat hold, uh, pass holders in level two and I sat next to Chucky guy, Darth Raider guy and skeleton guy. And apparently they are in charge of that section to get up and lead them into, let's see if I got it all right, if I learned correctly, Andrew. One, two, three, first down. That's a thing in Raider land. And then the other one that seems to be a big deal there is this Raiders. I don't know what that is. Like you guys can't come up with more inventive shit than those two things, but apparently those are very Raider things. And the third fun fact about going to the Raider Charger game, other than the Chargers could have taken a tie and both teams went to the playoffs, but the Chargers got greedy and thought they could win, uh, was, and this is the most, most mind boggling fact, the master of ceremonies at the Charger game is that same short dude from top rank boxing. He's there oh, yeah. all night kind of doing <laughs> well. master of ceremony shit yeah. throughout the game. They have a house band, uh, Little John, Lil, Lil, I didn't say Little, Lil John, did all the songs. He skeet, skeet, skeeted and to the wall and to the this, and then he turned down for what thing, and we had a full Little John halftime concert as well, which was a first for me at a standard football game. It was all very exciting in general, and the Raiderettes are hot, and... I sat in a section where there were absolutely no Charger jerseys for at least three to my left, three sections to my right. And I am so glad that I killed a Raider fan and stole his clothing and his weapons to go to the game. That's my story. And you're sticking to yeah, well, thanks for showing up, Lee. Which McCaw, it sucks. I behaved oh. much like you taught me. Sit there, I, watch I, the I, game, I, don't comment. Uh, Lee, it's Las Vegas. It ain't Oakland. There ain't, ain't, I'm not... There's nothing out there. Uh, I'm very think happy. You're that wrong. The energy was pretty heavy, dude. Listen, I'm very happy that they finally figured out how to cheer. 
I will I will applaud the Las Vegas Raiders for that one. They they finally figured out how to cheer the Raiders. The offense actually silenced the away team crowd because they always have a crowd now. Now, when, whoever plays the Raiders in Las Vegas, they basically got a presence there every, in every game this year so far. So it was real nice to see Derek Carr go under center and not actually have to hear uh, the opposing team's uh, crowd cheer. So they I got, showed up and they yeah. turned it off. And I'm telling you, you could hear yeah. a pin drop. For you people that think that this was going to end in a tie and, oh, it was because of the timeout that he called. Listen, your your coach should be fired for going for it on fourth and nothing at the 19-yard line. That was stupid. The end of the game, has not that timeout has nothing to do with the Raiders' decision. The Raiders' decision was always if we run into field goal position, they're going to kick a field goal. That's just all there is to it. It was going to be three run plays. They weren't going to try hardly. But they were nope. still going to try because you're talking about the seventh seed or the fifth seed. That's what we're talking about here. And you, and you, you can say upsets will will give the Raiders a potential home game in Las Vegas. They can look at it from that angle, or you could just look at the angle of do we want to be the seventh seed or the fifth seed? The fifth seed. And the Raiders were always going to go for the fifth. They didn't want to go to KC. They didn't want to be in the seventh seed. And let's just say it's upset weekend. Let's just say there's potential now the Raiders even get a home game during the playoffs if, if everybody gets uh, uh, upset going going into these these two uh, wild card weekends or playoff weekends. So, you know, no. this they, Nobody was shooting for a fucking tie except the Chargers. There you go. And there's your update for the NFL season. Tune in next week when Wild Card Sunday begins. This show is about boxing. And again, we appreciate all of the new. Yes, Andrew. I will say that the, what was it? Six fourth downs that you guys converted, Lee, kind of made me nervous about going into the playoffs. I will say that. <laughs> what the fuck, Lee? What I said to tall Raider fan next to me, and as a guy who's six foot two, for me to be surrounded by people that were bigger than me, was a little intimidating. I Me said that no. one of these teams is going to let the other team win. I just don't know which team is going to do something more crucially stupid. And the answer is the Chargers. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be here all week. Miguel. Miguel. What's up? In football, the offense gets four plays. On the fourth play, if they do not get 11 yards, Within those four plays, you got to have 10, over 10 for a first down. If you don't get over 10 for a first down, Miguel, the ball automatically goes to the other team. The San Diego Chargers, six times in a row, got to fourth down. Miguel, I'm look, I'm, I'm standing in front of my TV like, stop this fucking play, you guys. One play, baby. One play. The quarterback goes under center. I'm like, come on. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Stop it. Fuck! Six times in a row. That's what it sounded like in the, my living room. Um, they take years off of my life, man. They really do. When I give this team my all, when, I, when I'm when i in it to win it, man, I swear to God the Raiders take years off my life. My stomach was hurting. I think I needed the restroom at one point in that drive, but I couldn't go because their fucking game is on. That was deadly. Go ahead, my Lee. favorite part of the game is with about five minutes left when they were up by two scores and they let the Charger fan leave while they yell at the Charger fans as they leave. That was my favorite part of the game. Lee, Lee, tell me if I'm wrong. One of them was a fourth and fucking 21, correct? It was a fourth and 21, and he converted it easily. (laughs) Wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. Like, the fact, honestly, the Raiders deserved to lose. And the Chargers (laughs) deserved to lose. They were equally shitty. Like, I think they should have both been eliminated from the playoffs for that one game. Neither team really won it. It's just one did less stupid shit than the other. It, whoever had the ball last, Lee, whoever had the ball last. Pretty much. I don't know. Neither of them are going to do shit in the playoffs, so what does it matter? Hey, this show's about boxing. Go to boxingtonight.io. Follow me, Miguel, Andrew, all of us on social media. Get up to date on all the fights coming up. Uh, for the month of January, as well as the video if you're listening to the audio, or the audio if you're listening to the video. Let's get started. We got about a week and change to clean up. 
let's talk where we last left off. When we went on vacation, we had not talked about Luis Ortiz, who fought ridiculously on New Year's Day. Have we had this discussion? Did this somewhere magically happen? But I don't feel that we did. Because now Ortiz feels he's ready after beating Charles Martin. And he deserves a shot at someone in the top five or ten. I don't know why Luis Ortiz is still hanging around and we haven't addressed it since the fight. So let's start right where our last show left off, which is this heavyweight New Year's Day showdown. I start with you, Miguel. Did you learn anything from Ortiz other than he's still old, still has the daughter with the issues, and still looks like he's going to be beat until he throws a big punch? Um, If I learned anything is that he's in fact older now uh, because that's how he looked in the ring. Uh, it, it appeared as though any shot rocked him. You know, he went down a couple of times. Uh, to his credit, he came back and you know, fought the, and fought his way back to a to a KO or TKO victory. And it was it was well earned. You know, 100% credit to Ortiz. But I mean, the fact that he looked unstable as fuck. He looked. Um, I mean, he he generally always looks flat footed, right? That's kind of how he is. But he just did not seem to have his accuracy. It, every punch was landing. Uh, if we learned anything from Ortiz this weekend or last weekend, the weekend of the first, uh, is that he's actually older. Like he, like if, if we were all waiting for you know father time to catch up to him, and it's like, all right, when is it going to happen? It happened the, that that fight against Martin. Andrew, what did you learn from Luis Big Poppy Ortiz? <laughs> I learned that I'm uh, old, Lee, because uh, I kept falling asleep through the whole telecast. Um, wow not recuperate from the day before i was almost useless on saturday to my wife the kids uh and then i just could not stay up i finally got to see some of the last few rounds of the main event and it was a good fight um i'm not taking away from the fight i was just for some fucking reason i could not stay up um so yeah you know i did not expect charles martin to go so so deep so i'll give him credit for hanging in there and putting on a, a fight with um with Ortiz. Um so it was a decent fight, but uh but no, it was uh I totally um streamed it. I would never pay forty bucks for that that fight card. Katie Taylor admires Clarissa Shields, hope she can now focus focus on boxing. The only reason I bring it up is to say, Katie Taylor, go check out the year end show. She made the top five. Moving forward. Francis Ngannou guarantees boxing crossover, wants Wilder and Fury probably on the same night, knowing Francis. So let's talk about Francis Ngannou wanting to get paid, shall we, kids? Uh, Francis is going to do one last, U- uh, he had his last UFC fight officially, correct? Or coming Not, up on the 22nd. Up. It's coming up, yeah, on the 22nd. As as and then he said he's done, uh, he's already got uh, the blessing from uh, Papa Smurf. And he said, go do what you got to go do, bro, period, right? I think in Naganu's mind, he's going to win and keep the title and then go off quietly to fight Wilder and Fury on the same night. So I start with you, Miguel. What is the likelihood of Francis Naganu with everything that he's got on his plate? He's got a big title uh, defense on the 22nd in Anaheim, and then he's going to turn around and want to start taking some of that payday money um i mean i i can't blame him for for wanting to go after the big payday right i mean that's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a tough road because i mean he's not just gonna go in there uh, for the people that he's calling out in the boxing world i mean look we, we when we one of the reasons we're all the, you know fans of boxing is you know something gravitated us to it right so, some something of us as children or our influences from our fathers brought us to this fucking sport and it brought us to bring you know to put on a pair of gloves it, it, you know when you put on a pair of gloves it's like okay you do, either you have a knack for it or you don't have a knack for it you know it's just kind of how it is and then then you excel from there it, it, Francis Ngannou does not look like he has a knack I'm sorry to say even though he's the heavyweight champion of the UFC for boxing He's got a heavy ass right hand. The dude can fucking knock somebody out if he lands. But he take he's wild as all shit, and he's he has this idea that because he has a heavy right hand, that he's that he can box, which is completely different, you know, from from everything else. He's gonna try to go that wilder route, right? He's gonna be like, well, this is my my great equalizer. This is my lifesaver. If I'm ever down on the cards, I still got this right hand. Um, 
he's overlooking first and foremost his next opponent, right? Uh, Cyril Gane. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough fight. Like this dude, it, this guy that he's fighting, right? He's this French guy who's a really who's a pretty good solid kickboxer, and he's he plays it safe. Like he always plays it safe. He's in boring ass fights. I wouldn't be surprised if the fight turns out to be a total snooze fest. But he plays it so safe that it's gonna be tough for Ngano to land on him. I, like that's how it's gonna end up being. So he's first and foremost already looking overlooking his opponent here. And um, as far as I understand, if I recall correctly, the way UFC contracts work, if you're the champion and you win your last fight on the contract, it just rolls over. That's what I recall. Uh, maybe that's not the case specifically with Ngano, so I'm not entirely sure. But um, nonetheless, he's overlooking his opponent first and foremost. Secondly, I think he's totally underestimating or overestimating his quote-unquote boxing skills and wanting to venture into that. Yes, I get it. He wants the payday. I sure as hell hope that the you know concussion he's going to receive inside the boxing ring is worth the payday. Uh, but, I mean, I, I would love for him to not go immediately into the upper echelon of the, of the heavyweights, you know, or something a little bit. We mentioned this before, like a Kalinowski or something like that, right? Luis Ortiz. Kal- I like uh, the Luis Ortiz even, fight. Even Ortiz is still a little too much, man. I mean, there's a Cuban. He's he's got some fantastic skill. Maybe maybe you know maybe he can knock him out. Maybe he can't. But it's even Ortiz at the age of 42 or 43, whatever the fuck he is, is still too much of a stretch uh, for for Ngano. So I would say lower end guys. I would love to see that and maybe work his way up because you know maybe get himself a little bit more extra pay. He's that way. But I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to cash out entirely. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's overlooking his his you know next opponent, and it it might not go. I should say it most likely will not go very well for him if he tries his venture at, at boxing uh, with the big names. I should say, Andrew Labuschagne. First, I would tell the champ, the UFC champ, to go after Jake Paul before you step in the ring <laughs> with a professional boxer. Let Let's finish the Jake Paul story first with the UFC. Um, dead serious. Second. Um, he's not going to do it. Um, this is only to promote his next fight with the UFC. Um, he, they're not going to fight Tyson Fury. He's already had a change of heart. He's talking about different rules now. And, you know, it's just, uh, I, I wish, I wish they would put a rest to all of this bull nonsense. It's nonsense. The, the UFC would never allow him to come over without their, name being a part of that right. fight without them getting a piece of the cake awesome. no way yeah it, yeah exactly bro and, and make millions of dollars without them no mm-hmm. they would re-sign them and i hope not do it seriously because it's not going to end well and who wants your anyway gym after a knockout i don't think anybody does so i, I don't see the fight going yeah let's let's put this in a boxing match exactly but i'm talking about what miguel saying about the team concentration on their next opponent all of these ufc guys have and even the girl uh ronda rousey they were putting her in the boxing ring saying she could beat floyd obviously she couldn't beat holly holmes or her next opponent then you have to go for it oh he's gonna fight floyd he's gonna fight as their their way to promote their fight and they think all these guys look at the line what you do what you do and you're just asking them these questions they seem to lose their next fight so i would not be surprised if, if this man lost his next fight also when you keep talking about ice and fury when you keep dreaming about the money that's all they do, they do yeah they do that's exactly it mm-hmm. they, they get stuck in this shit and, and they're not training they're not doing these you don't want any part of this, UFC. What you guys want to do is pressure Dana White. I'm so sick and fucking tired of the, the media, these these known media members, these guys with the known outlet that can get this thing pushed. They, oh, could it happen? Oh, could it happen? Yes, it could happen. If the money is right, any fight could happen. Deontay Wilder would do it. Tyson Fury would do it. You, get, you have to pay them what they're making in the boxing ring. And I believe many fight boxers would cross over and give you that one night of, uh, I think all of these men, they have egos where they love to prove themselves as fighters, as the mm-hmm. best fighters in the world. Damn well believe if the UFC is given a $25 million guaranteed payday, they're showing up to that octagon. Moving forward. Spence Ugas confirmed plans for springtime fight. WBC, WBA, IBF, welterweight unification bout. 
All right, we're here. They're talking springtime. Uh, Miguel, is it a good scrap? Um, uh, I mean, no. Like the, the short answer to that is no. Uh, it's it's not going to be a good scrap. I don't see uh, Ugas being able to do anything to Spence in this one. Um, if if this fight accomplishes anything, it's just you know another unification bout, and it uh, further solidifies the welterweight division. Uh, you know, up on uh, Spence's shoulders. Um, uh, but I mean, really, that's that's ultimately what we all want, right? We all want one undisputed champion in, in every weight division, and this is just one step closer to that. But really, other than that, it doesn't really accomplish much. What we're not, this isn't the fight that we all want to see. We you know we we can talk about it until we're blue in the face, and we have already countless times. Over, over. Uh, you know, we want the the Spence and Crawford fight that we're going. To, you know, we're going to try to not hold our breath for. But I mean, other than the unification, this right, this fight really doesn't accomplish much. Great for Ugas. You know, he got himself yet another major payday. Right, the the payday with with um, I guess his first major one, I should say, with Porter, and then later on with uh, with Manny Pacquiao, and now here again. So. You know he's he's pretty much out the door as well, right? He's not a spring chicken. I'm talking about Ugas. So you know, getting some major paydays before he, he cashes out on his career, good for him. Um, so he's doing the most of it. He's definitely maximizing it as most as he can. But I mean, this isn't one. I mean, I sure as hell hope it's not on pay per view, really, because I mean, there's of no fucking way I'm is. gonna. Oh Jesus Christ! All right. Come on, put um, the only, on the only way they can do it now, Miko. No yeah. oh, fucking hell. So uh, so yeah, I I mean I'm not gonna order it. That's for damn sure. I'm you know, VIP box. Shout out to VIP box. Uh, so I'm definitely hey, make sure to catch it there. But Miguel, man. yes, Miguel, you might be right. I let you keep going, but there might have been a rumor of it on Fox. Lee, does the article say pay per view or does it say Fox? I don't know. Let's take a look, cool. shall we? All right, uh, world championship, blah blah, December 9th, blah 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 blah. Blah, blah, words, words. Spence, blah, blah. Blah, blah, no word. They have oh. not said. Interesting. They have mm. said nothing about how it will be viewed. Look, it's a garbage fight. I agree with Miguel. It's not a good fight at all because it's not the fight that we want to see. Um, Ugas was outworked and outlanded by a 42-year-old man who retired immediately after the fight. Uh, Manny did not get knocked out. He wasn't beaten to a pulp. There was there, he, there was nothing happened in that. If Manny took a worse defeat by Marquez seven years ago, eight years ago than he did by Ugas that day. Seriously, seriously, yeah, there is nothing. Spence was a favorite against Pacquiao. Ugas wasn't. Ugas won because of the punching inside of the punches. I think is how they described that victory. <laughs> oh, no, this, this fight is a fucking pick, cherry picked. I'm scared of Terrence Crawford moment for Spence again in his career. I don't, I, I wonder if Spence's family even takes this shit serious anymore with this whole strap season bullshit. There, there is no shit. The strap season is over with. There's one fight that you were supposed to take, and that's Terrence Crawford, and you are running from it big time, and everybody sees it now. This fight. Hopefully his fans show up. No one else will. Moving forward. Hey, Floyd's going to fight again in Dubai against the child. <laughs> Anybody surprised uh, that he's fighting a YouTuber who has money? I mean, uh, I've seen who they're talking about, but this rumor is going around. It's just basically a YouTuber whose dad is a um, second richest guy in the world. Billionaire. Oh, what Jesus I, mean, I don't even know who the hell this YouTuber is. I, I don't know. I, I, why don't they even mention his name? What the hell? Bro, we don't we don't need to know those people. They they got money over there. You know that. So well, there you go. At least we covered it. Did you have so any wait. feedback on it, Andrew? You know, they say, what's that old saying where there's smoke, there's fire? Mm -hmm. okay. Did you guys Jake Paul tweet out about Mayweather's business uh TMT might be going bankrupt? Shafting shafting him for the money after the fight. Oh. Did, didn't well, he just open up a gym here? I, brother. That's his brother that's saying that. Yeah, he hasn't been paid yet. I guess when Floyd mm. posted this this little trip, his last little trip, yeah, that came out. But I, I'm talking about um, Jake Paul himself. <laughs> I know I'm saying it like he's somebody now in the sport of boxing. It's fucking pathetic, but that's where we're here. That's where we're at now. Um, he he. I'm just saying he's the one that said uh, he might have to buy Floyd's uh, company. Yeah. Uh, the money, what is it? The money promotions? The, the yeah, money team. TMT, TMT. The money team. Yeah. So, so uh, 
you know, now he's, you know, taking a fight from, listen, this money is, this isn't going to do shit in America. Nobody cares about this fight. This is a basically Floyd just collecting a check from somebody rich out there that one. This is like when the wrestlers from the UFC go and wrestle with the uh, princes, you know, and they, they yeah. those guys like wrestling out there. So they, I guess they always buy UFC fighters to wrestle private matches. This is all Floyd's doing. This kid's yeah. probably done a few sparring rounds and is like, fuck it, I'll buy Floyd and spar with him. Um, where the real money is, uh, and I don't know if Floyd's selling his ass like that, but uh, the real money is Floyd taking a defeat by this kid. If Floyd could, get, could squeeze 100 mil out of, what do they say? I think they're worth 13 billion. I want yeah. to say don't hold to that, but I think that it's somewhere around Floyd that table. dive for a hundred million dollars. Uh, you know, get him out of get him out of all this financial trouble that he's in with TMT. Fuck it, I'll take it. You know, crack me on the chin yeah. one time, I'll fall down. <laughs> fifty one and one, or fifty one, fifty and one, whatever the hell it is. Or I'll let yeah. you hit me. Yeah, for fifty million, I'll I'll let you hit me once and go to my knee or something. Yeah, I could see and, that. Uh, and he just opened a gym or something like that, right? Like uh, I read, he, he opened a gym here. He has some sort of grand opening. I think it was here in Vegas. I'm pretty sure it was actually uh, some like TMT fitness something bullshit. Um, some something else is most likely gonna fail for him. There you go. It seemed to always. <laughs> <laughs> not too many gyms make it, right? They, right. They, yeah, not the best investment there. Hey. A guy named Frank Sanchez uh, fought on that extraordinary heavyweight card, and based on his victory, apparently he's now ready for Alexander to use Tyson Fury and will knock every single one of them out. Now, I remember this fight, and um, that is not exactly what I thought after watching him, but perhaps, you know, it's been a week, and I've been to Vegas a couple of times since the fight. A am I wrong about this, Miguel, or is this dude just high on crack like i think he is um well i mean he is part of the the canelo team so he's high on something i'm sure he's something uh, being ingested <laughs> he but, didn't uh, do jack in that he fight. didn't do shit dude he it, it was a unanimous decision it was only 10 rounds so you know fine you know he beat this dude this german guy this hammer guy right and he did well i'm not gonna say he didn't do well but it's like man it's i i, I kind of understand his his position you know he is 29 now he better start fucking getting those big high paydays against those big names but uh it just seems like people see yeah, it's it's the you know the the top of the heap at, at the heavyweight division it's like them and then everybody else so I, everybody else wants to get that crack but it's man it's quite the leap uh, i didn't see anything spectacular out of sanchez i mean if we want to you know use the term that uh, commentators use all the time it's a workman like uh performance or whatever right that's pretty much all it was andrew you slept through the fight but i'll recap for you <laughs> boring 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 decision <laughs> yeah you know what? the fight was pretty good. The, the very first fight, it was like back and forth, knockdown. Yes, the very and, and the, first the, the fight very of the night one. and the rest of the night And sucked. the rest were just news fest, yeah. Yeah, they were. Oh, well. Uh, let's get to something Andrew would like to talk about. Nonito Donaire. I would love to fight Estrada, Chocolito, oh. winner. I could go down to 115. Sure, why the hell not? He'll take punishment at any weight, Andrew. <laughs> what say you about him getting his head bashed in more? Well, no, I mean, that's that's unfair, Lee. He's like the second-ranked fighter in the division, right, under Inouye. Isn't Nonito mm -hmm. still top top of the tier? So you can't say that. What I don't like about it is the losing weight at this age. Um, he, You know, he of course, these fighters think they can do anything most of the time, and uh, I think Nonito's just having a moment there. I, I don't want to see him drop down and wait at, at what is he, 40 now um, to, to 40, fight 40, 50, whatever. He's... <laughs> definitely up there i mean yeah all yeah, of it in general true. has got to be stressful at best for his body and his brain i would imagine the dude goes to war every time he's <laughs> whatever miguel miguel uh are you the voice of reason but you're okay with him fighting the winner and watching him go 12 um... bloody rounds with someone 
Well, I mean, he's he's 39. He'll be 40 later this year, like late, late this year, November-ish. Um, so losing, and, and granted, we're not talking about a ton of fucking weight here. It's only three pounds, if I'm not mistaken. He's bad on weight. He's at 118, and then dropping down to 115, it's only, you know, three pounds. And if you see him at 118, it doesn't look like he's ripped, you know? So maybe he does have, you know, three pounds he can spare and drop down. Because, you know, we mentioned this before, the last thing that fighters lose is their power. He still has that pop in the left hand. And you know, Chocolatito and um, and Estrada—they're not exactly you know like knockout punchers by any stretch. You know, they are very very good tacticians, and they'll they're, they will wear you down. And they're very good. You know, uh, their technique is fantastic. It's, they're very fundamentally sound, but they're not exactly knockout punches. So uh, I don't think that no that Donaire would would be you know out of his league by any stretch, dropping down three pounds and finding the winner of that. Um, I mean, it would be a, it would be a very entertaining fight. I think it's 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 intriguing. Um, I, I I don't see. I mean, if he fights in a way again well that's another story because in a way is a monster fucking puncher of course but these guys at 115 aren't so that wouldn't be too much of a risk i mean i think he would deplete himself some to some degree right going down to 115 but like i said he doesn't look like he's that you know ripped at 118 anyway so dropping down three pounds doesn't seem like it's much but he is almost 40 uh i, I don't know it's the dropping weight is kind of like the number one thing where I'm like, no, 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 because that will amplify any shots he's going to get anyway at 115. Uh, but hey, it's intriguing. It's it's the names in in the you know bantamweight ish division, uh, so I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh, it does it rate as a good scrap on the good scrap meter? <laughs> yes, it, it'll rate it as a good scrap. Yes, yes. You would have to look at how many years he's been out of the division before we say he can lose those three pounds with no problem. Um, and I think it's been four, if not more. And, and that at 39, man, and, and you know, they're, those guys, they're not heavy punchers, but they throw a thousand punches, right? And if you're yeah. not physically right. ready for a thousand punches in 12 rounds, uh, it's going to be Pacquiao De La Hoya all over again. Um, so I, I would stay away from that. I, and it's kind of sad. I, what happened to the Inouye showdown? You know, um, I thought he was working this comeback to get the big payday over there in Japan. Yeah, um, what happened? They, the, the, the unification that was supposed to go down. Yeah. 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 Well, there that, you go. That, that, that's weird. Go ahead, Lee. A payday is what he wants. Moving forward, Vargas Smith, Sorvi Rungvinzai makes his return with Quadra, Carlos Cuadras on the February 5th Gila River mm-hmm. Arena in Glendale, Arizona. Guard. That's right. The person I like to stalk the most, Jesse Vargas, <laughs> is taking on Liam Beefy Smith, and they're making it official to fight in Arizona where nobody on this card is from whatsoever. So I have no clue to why we're in Glendale, Arizona. Eddie, Eddie, Hearn, Eddie Hearn's the type of dipshit that takes Garcia to Fresno and Vargas to, to Arizona. That, it's just Eddie Hearn. This is know? a Vegas fight if you're going to put Jesse Vargas on as your main event. And certainly with Liam Beefy Smith, for God's sakes. Make him go to a destination to see it. Uh, all right, let's turn it over to the scrap meter. Uh, Jesse versus Beefy and Sor V. Rungvinzai, who I thought was dead or at least picking rice somewhere, and Carlos Cuadras. Unless there's a different Cuadras out there, I'm pretty positive without scrolling through the article, it's Carlos Cuadras, which means yeah. another 150 year old dude getting in the ring who's been around forever. Uh, scrap meter me these two fights, young man. Um, uh, it's it, it's up there. I mean, I think the fights are going to be pretty entertaining. I mean, when Cuadra steps in the ring, it's going to be a fun fight, and he's fighting, you know, sort of visa. And uh, I, I, is it the second fight or the third fight? I'm not sure how many times they've already fought prior to this, but fifteen um, at this point. This is <laughs> then, the fifteenth. Yeah. Fight. Then, then there are 14 fights prior to that were pretty entertaining. So uh, I, you know, I'm sure that this one is going to be up there as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is Vargas moving up to 154 for the first time. Um, so his punches are going to be the same. No power for a guy yeah, who had if no had none, power previously. Yes. If he had none at 147, he's not going to have any at 154. Um, but hey, this is you know the next you know step in his career. He's turning another corner and and or another page or whatever, and he's trying to make his name at, at 154. Um, why not? You know, against Beefy Smith though. Uh, Oh, fuck that that's gonna be tough i'm not sure how it's gonna go for him but it's it'll be entertaining i, I will say that I, i'm i'm pretty these are gonna be some pretty good scraps i will say that yes ap so he fought him in 2014 does anyone care in 2022 um listen eddie hearn sucks there's so many other fighters in the zone that we that 
should be taking main event cards, um, not Jesse Vargas and and not Quadras and Rung Um So no, I'm I'm not looking forward to this fight at all, uh, either of them. But Sor Rung Vinsai would have to go back to the sweatshops and sew children's clothing, Andrew, if he didn't have boxing. As long as there's rats, he will be fine. <laughs> wow. Moving forward, Jaime Munguia versus Demetrius Ballard set for February 19th. Virgil Ortiz Jr. takes on Michael McKinson on March 19th. Golden Boy cranking out monstrous hits going into the brand new year. Um, so Jaime Munguia is fighting nobody and Virgil Ortiz Jr. is going to fight nobody. Yay! How much fun is that? I'll start with you, Andrew. Are you shocked that Oscar is producing crap? No, not shocked. Look, they have decent records. You can point at that. Um, but there's nothing else here. Did, Munguia, I feel so sorry for this young man. He should be so much for, further in his career than where he's at right now. Um, Virgil Ortiz seems to be on a decent pace. I, I think he's he's in all right position. But but Jaime, I would be so upset with with Oscar right now if if this you know these are the opponents they're still feeding him with the names that they have surrounding this guy. Like it, it's just amazing that that he he Oscar can't even get the zone to overpay for Andrade. That's how pathetic this is. You know what I Andrade. mean? Like, like, yeah. On, oh, Android. I'm sorry. Did I say Andrade? Did I, did I say the correct way? Just I'm do sorry. Boo -boo. It's so much easier. <laughs> Andrade. He might change it again next week. Yeah. So it, it's just, you know, it's sad. We're, we're, I thought Munguia would be farther than this. Um, uh, not, not looking forward to his fight. Uh, but, but Ortiz is, is a decent opponent. Miguel scrap, uh, rating. Uh, pretty low on this one um yeah i thought demetrius and i'm like huh when i was like wait wait that's not that's not the same demetrius that we're talking about so um this ballard dude is 20 21 i think or 21 and 0 i think or 21 and 1 or something like that um 11 ko's nothing major um i'm not sure what exactly mungia is doing here uh other than you know obviously de La Hoya not not really doing his part um, is just kind of lingering here, and is not a kind of fight that we want to see at this point. Like he's has he has over thirty fights, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Mugia does at this point shouldn't be fighting guys like like Ballard. Um, I, I'm excited to see Virgil Ortiz back in the ring. Of course, I'm not sure who this McKinson guy is. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll look him up. Yeah, cab driver. So, I mean, that's pretty much what we're gonna get. We're gonna get Mugia against a cab driver and Ortiz against a cab driver. Add another one, you know, another tally to their win records. Um, you know, whatever. I'm gonna watch it because, of course, I do have to zone. But not not terribly excited about this one. There you go. Moving forward, Johnny Gonzalez. If Chavez Jr. loses to Jake <laughs> Paul, he better retire from boxing. Yes, the countdown begins to the end of the Chavez Jr. Uh, career, where he will then just become a probably a YouTuber. I would have. That's got to be next in the Chavez game plan, uh, along with his drug addiction problems. That should also play out. So the quotes are real simple. Uh, it is good business these YouTubers are doing who want to face boxers. But if the Chavez Jr. fight happens, I just hope that Julio prepares well, because if he loses to Paul, then he had better retire from boxing. Chavez has always attracted the spotlight, but it's because of his dad, because whatever he whenever he shows up, his father will always accompany him and people want to see the great Julio Chavez, Cesar Chavez. Uh, I hope I can get a few million with Jake Paul. If he beats me, I'll retire. I don't get paid. I don't want money if I don't beat him. Retirement, not interested in his money if I do not win. Chavez Jr. told Boxeo. Uh, okay, let's talk about it because people have already beaten Chavez Jr. and he still isn't retiring. I thought, you know, a former UFC guy beating you would be enough, or the fact that your dad's fixing fight cards in Kuliakon would be enough for you to quit. But now we're going to move this up one full level to Jake Paul. I start with you, Miguel. If, uh, well, we all know it's going to be a circus and entertaining until the actual fight, if they make the fight. My question is, if he loses this, I personally don't think he's going anywhere. I think he'll stick around and be a sideshow freak for as long as he can get paid. Yeah, I don't believe that one bit. I don't believe that he'll retire. I mean, at this point, his 
he's his brain is so fried that he still thinks he can do it. Um, so it, even I mean I, I'm not even sure the fight something like this is gonna take place. I mean I'm I'm sure Chavez Jr. is like dying for a payday like this. Um, but I mean looking at his last fight that looked like took place in some fucking high school gym or something. Uh, I'm sure he's dying for a payday. So yes, of course he's gonna try to call out uh, Paul Jake Paul and try to make it enticing, right? Try to make it like hey loser leaves town if I lose I retire etc. Oh it makes things a little bit more you know and I gotta uh, make, get a tattoo fights. on my ass and yeah. heart shape this and blah blah <laughs> some, blah. And some stipulation that makes the fight juicy, right? Like, hey, I'll retire if it. We'll shave heads all, at the end of the fight. Whatever, yeah, yeah whatever. I'll wear pro your wrestling team's jersey or you guys want. Shit, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Um, whatever. So I don't believe it for one fucking second. If the fight takes place, which I don't even think the fight is really going to happen, first and foremost. But if it does, and let's say for the sake of argument, Chavez Jr. loses, I absolutely do not think he's going to retire. He's going to keep on trucking. Andrew Labuschagne. Um, Chavez is a fraud. Jake Paul knows that, so he'll work with them. Chavez Ooh. is not in boxing to m- win fights anymore. He's in boxing to collect checks. He's been in boxing to collect checks for a while now. Ooh. Um, so so I, I there's a possibility this fight gets made because of the the because of Chavez Jr. where he's at in life right now, but. The numbers for the Jake Paul Woodley rematch were not good at all. I don't know if they're real, but Paul Jake Paul's it, he's got to really you know him and Showtime are going to sit down and actually talk you know they got to talk about this because sixty five thousand uh, buys is not going to pay the 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 rent for Jake Paul and Chavez Jr. Um, so so yeah, there's there's a there's a window of opportunity here for Chavez. It's not big. But he possibly gets this fight um, just because he's a ex champ, and I mean seriously, before he was losing to Anderson Silva, Silva wasn't he? He lost to his dad's prospect in a high school gym over in, in Mexico somewhere, um, and then that kid came to America and like lost his next fight. So Chavez has been losing to nobodies. Hey, forget Anderson Silva; he lost to nobodies before Silva, um, and everyone on Fight Net Radio picked the MMA guy to beat Chavez Jr. when they fought and he beat him too. So Jake Paul knows all this. They're not stupid. They're seeing this. They're they're handpicking Chavez. Chavez is pathetic. If, they, if his dad had any um respect he uh, put a bullet in his head. He would stop <laughs> take, this, take him he out would back. Stop this this circus act and he, from happening or <laughs> at least to catch yourself. And, and it, look, in a lot of ways Chavez Sr. has um, but but he he should come out in public and say this is a, a bullshit fight. My my son is getting paid to take a dive because that's what Chavez Jr. That that's what he is now. He, Chavez Jr. Is gets paid. How to much show- do you think it would cost? Wait, if I won the lottery, Andrew, how much would that cost? Uh, a million bucks. A million bucks. Easy. He they they kid. He's. Nah, that's not Chavez bad Jr. for the live anniversary of Fight Net Radio. If I win the lottery. Oh, yeah. No, Lee, you could totally buy his ass. Yes. We could do a live version of Would You Spill My Drink and just have him I'm act not- it all out. <laughs> Miguel, I'm not playing. Chavez, the fraud now. He, he uh, Chavez is is uh-huh. down to selling his father's last name. That's all he's about now. They, yeah. You put his name on a billboard and they believe Metskins will show up. That That's how they work. Well, yep. yeah. It, it's that would that, be the reason I do it to sell out the arena. Or the gym. The high school gym. Well, yeah, whatever. Moving forward. Hey, Eddie Hearn believes that uh, Fury White Purse bid could be delayed by a week. Oh, and there was a story hell. also it's being delayed by it was delayed by a week. Uh, there were f- comments by Eddie Hearn. Yeah, I absolutely think the fight will happen. The purse bid at 8020 is not fair to Dillian. And he does a hell of a job picking cotton out at my house. So He's all against it because it's an 80-20 split. Um, You're not the name in the fight, bruh. Second of all, it's your only shot to get a title, bruh. Let the dude fight it even if it's for a dollar, bruh. At this point, I'll bet Dillian White would take a championship fight against either guy for no cash, for just the chance to get the belts. Uh, And once again, Eddie Hearn has made it pretty clear, clear Eh, the purse will be on delay. Eh, it'll go to arbitration. Eh, it's an 80-20 split. 
eh, I really don't want him not to pick Cotton at, at my place. Like, I got to be perfectly honest. He is a much better field hand than he is a boxer. He will just sadly disappoint me. Uh, those were his comments. Go ahead and check it out on Boxing Scene, by the way, if you're listening to the audio. Uh, so I start with you this time, Andrew Labuschagne. Is Dillian White ever going to fight for a fucking title in my lifetime? In your lifetime, hopefully. Uh, in, in his next fight, probably not. Um, so, And it might not be for the WBC when he does get that shot for the title. Um, they might something shitty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Get him something really, something really. Hey, there's a brand new WBC belt they made just for you. It's called the Clan Plantation Worker Belt. It was made with strands of cotton. Sorry, that was really <laughs> shitty. Damn. It was yeah, strong. Coming out strong. The beginning right. of the year, got to come out strong. Miguel, what do you think? Is Eddie Hearn ever going to get this guy into a title fight? Um, you know, uh, I'm starting to fall for it because I'm starting to believe yes. And even when, when we're getting closer to these fights, it's like, okay, okay, now, now there's, like, talks, there's more talks about it, there's there's ink to paper, um, or pen to paper, whatever the fuck you call it, you know, uh, I, it, it's, I, I'm starting to get the impression that, like, it's gonna happen, um, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, like you mentioned, Dillian just says, okay, fine, I'll take the 80-20, let's just fucking do it already, um, I mean, he, he understands, he's not the, the A-side, I'm sure he's fully aware of that, but I know he's trying to get, he, he's, he's towards the end of his career, right, he's trying to get the last few major paydays that he possibly can so it's like can i get a, a 70 30 please at least something along those lines um but i i feel like there's going to be at some point um i i do agree with andrew i think that his next fight isn't going to be the fight that he's he wants he's going to do one of these like temporary you know in the in the meantime kind of fights and then the one that follows in come like to some say sort of gila agreement. river bend arizona <laughs> in like cedar rapids iowa or some shit yeah some, sure. some way the place where the hell out there lancaster how about Barstow? Barstow's that, a good place to have. Right, there Victorville. In Massachusetts, is that where the MGM, where's the other one at? Uh, Connecticut. The Connecticut, yeah. Foxwoods or something? Foxwoods. Dillian, that's where yeah. Dillian White would be fighting. Foxwoods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody fights room. at Foxwoods anymore. That is <laughs> boxing hell. Hilarious. <laughs> Malik Scott returns to talk about his buddy, Deontay Wilder. Uh, I have to read all the quotes only because of the headline. It's a blessing to be in his position. I don't know what kind of spin you can put on the story, but of all the stories I've earmarked for today, this is the one that I looked at going, I don't even need to prepare. This is just gold in the making out of Malik Scott. Let's see what he says. It's mixed feelings because ultimately I have accomplished all my goals. Wilder uh, Wilder told Kevin Hart on Cold as Balls. Yes, I watched that episode as well. I told my daughter when she was one that I'd be champion and I'd be able to support her beyond belief. I've done that. There's a lot of things that I've accomplished that I feel I have to, I don't feel I have to prove anything uh, because I've already proven it. Right. Should I push forward? Should I give it a go one more time or should I retire and focus on other things that I already have other things that I want to get into? I'll bet a dollar. He has none of those things. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, let's see what Malik responds to all this. I know people have been hearing about Deontay. He has spoken about having the option to retire, which is true. Like I told him the other day, it's a blessing to be in his position. What? I told Deontay, bro. Do you think he really says bro? (laughs) Bro, you can do whatever it is you want to do. No, you can't. You can't be president. You can't even work at McDonald's, technically. I don't even think you're qualified to work there. You have anger issues. Um, So not anything. If you stay in the game, what game? He was never in the boxing game. It would require that he fought the top 10. You become two-time heavyweight champion of the world. You mean like the first belt that was given to him on a silver platter? If you retire, you've got everything that you came for. Either way, you win. That is some really fucked up logic. (laughs) Uh, Do you know how many fighters that there are in that position? Who cares? Because they all try to come back, Malik. What are you talking about? They fight because they have to. They literally can't retire. That's not true either. People throw money at them to fight one more time. I'm pretty sure Klitschko wanted to quit 
and not have that next fight with Anthony Joshua, but somebody threw a big enough pile of cash in front of Klitschko, who was married to a fucking knockout drop-dead actress wife, that he's banging on the regular people. He's done, looks awesome, and he's smart. And what? Money. Money changes everything. It's it's not a hell of a position. I don't... What the fuck is up with this hood logic of... You were the champ, man. You can go out on top. No, dude, you lost against your first real, like, fight. I don't want to break it to you. You basically lost all three of your fights with the same dude. What are we even talking about here? I can't even wrap my brain around what they're trying to explain. Like, they're talking like this is the first loss to Tyson Fury. Like, the other two fights never even occurred. There was no draw. There was no loss. There was just... This loss. This is when you got beat, bro. The the other two times don't count because it weighed too much and somebody was doping your water and <laughs> there were microchips and, and in your head. And the gloves are all fucked up. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I, so this is how the Deontay Wilder crazy starts. And my question is, yeah, I guess it's cool if you want to fight guys like Luis Ortiz or Dillian White or like sub-level beat, but... There's no way he can get in the ring with a Tyson Fury. There's no way he can get in the ring with Alexander Usyk. These people would systematically dissect him. He's transparent. He's one dimension. I'm talking boxing again. You guys are supposed to stop me. He's incredibly one dimensional as a heavyweight. Now, granted, it is the most ungodly one punch power I have ever seen in the heavyweight division since Mike Tyson. Okay. We can all agree on that. But Mike had moves. Mike could box. Deontay can't box, can't dance, can't speak, has crazy thoughts in his head. And all he is is a sideshow with one. Like he's like a long drive. Like when I go to play uh, golf, right, in a tournament, they'll have like a long ball hole and they'll have a professional long ball hitter. And I always ask the same question. Were you any good on the tour? No. All I can do is one thing, hit the ball long. Cool for you at parties or working at, you know, a mortgage company's golf thing on a Thursday, I guess. Deontay might as well sign up to fight Francis Ngannou or anything else. Like he's a sideshow. Uh, I start with you this time, Andrew. Is it is he in a blessed position or are they just batshit crazy? That shit crazy. And then blessed wanted to make sure. Yeah, blessed position as far as, you know, where they're at in life, maybe. You know, yes, they worked hard for their money and they made a lot of it. So blessed in that way. But as far as like a boxing standpoint, where you're at in the boxing career, no. You actually it looks like he's at the end of his career here. He's one defeat away from being written off totally. So not blessed in that sense. And by the way, Andrew, because I'll never let it go. And if it weren't for Steven Espinosa, this dude would be hundreds of millions of dollars richer. Hundreds. Hundreds. Yes. Oh, my God, you would be so much richer. I'll just keep saying it to remind you. And when I meet you in person, Deontay, my first words will be, hey, are you still are you going to sue Steven Espinosa and try to get some of those millions? Just wondering a real, for a friend. A real boxing guy would have had Wilder with the zone and fighting Anthony Joshua way, way before ever stepping in the ring with Tyson Fury, a okay. real boxing knowledgeable uh, advisor. He would have seen right through Anthony Joshua's. Is that breaking news, Andrew? I feel like we need special effects news. Uh, wait, hold on. This just coming in. It's reported by Andrew Labashe of Fight Net Radio. Al Heyman has no boxing knowledge whatsoever. But, you heard it hey, here first. Hey, you know, it, it, I think the same thing happened with the Pacquiao. Yeah, like Floyd made good money, Lee. But did he make the three fight money? Did he make the Roberto Duran Leonard no, money? No, his ego got, you know what? His ego was bigger <laughs> than making hundreds of millions of dollars. He, he could have fought Manny three times. This you is know exactly like, the same story. This is an ego real, bigger than hundreds of millions. A, a real knowledgeable boxing head would have had Floyd fighting the one-legged Sergio Martinez for the middleweight title way before Miguel Cotto ever got gifted 
that fucking title. Gifted. The guy blows his knee in round one. <laughs> I hear you. Look, ego you have, in boxing is everything, and that's have, what TMT and could you TV's imagine are about. Floyd Mayweather would have went to 160 and beat Sergio Martinez, what he, what his ego would be like today? No. No. I'd rather I not. I'd rather not imagine. I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather not think about that. I think that's pretty safe. Miguel, uh are they batshit crazy or uh are they relevant? Uh and blessed. Well, uh well, I mean, I don't know if I'd Yes, they are batshit crazy, yes. But I it sounds like from I mean, if I can surmise this from what if, uh, Malik Scott is trying to say, it, it, it's almost like, hey, Wilder, quit while you're ahead, bro. You're already far more ahead than we fucking realized you were going to get. You're this far. Let's just count our blessings and call it a career. That's kind of what it started to sound like. You know, he, he briefly mentions, uh, you know, his retirement talks uh, from Wilder. So I kind of feel like he's already sort of jumping on that spot. But when, so when I see stuff like this, like, hey, it, it's a it's a blessing to be in, in his position. I think it's kind of like, hey, man, count your blessings. Just quit while you're ahead. We already got the fucking money. Let's just call it a career. Uh, which, hey, to some degree, I, I agree. You know I mean? Like, at this point, I don't think, uh, as Andrew said, he's like one loss away and, you know, a bad loss away from being completely irrelevant and completely forgetting to, to even mention him from here on out. Uh, so it, maybe, like, I, I, I said this some time ago. We're not going to see the same Deontay Wilder again. Uh, we may not see him in the ring again, but definitely not the same one as before. So I would not be surprised if Wilder just co- does call it quits. And it sort of sounds like Malik is on that same page. He, well, he, I'm going to translate he, his conversation for you in a second. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, go, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to translate what he really told the bronze bomber. Yo, bro, you are as dumb as a box of rocks. Like, you'd have $100 million if it wasn't for, like, that Espinosa thing. <laughs> like, one more punch to the head and you're fucking even dumber, bro. Like, let's just call it a day. That's probably what happened. That's my theory. Definitely, but, definitely might be getting a hearing aid in that left ear if he keeps getting hit to the head. I'll, I'll tell you that. There you go. And a hearing aid, bro. You'll get a hearing aid. Think of it that way. The Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk rematch is starting mm. to finalize. They're looking at April. Uh, still no word on where Anthony Joshua is going to train. And that <laughs> seems to be the biggest debate in all of boxing. Like, that's the current boxing watch. We're not watching Floyd, any YouTuber. We're not watching Jake Paul or Francis Ngannou. Where the biggest story in all of the boxing sites. Who's going to train Anthony Joshua? And the only other story that's out there is I'm going to drop some of this bodybuilder stuff and become a better boxer to my response of, are you out of your fucking mind? Like you're going to try to box with a boxer who's been boxing his whole life. This was, this was his actual quote, Lee. I won three rounds in the last fight. I only have to win four more. Oh, (laughs) All I have to do is learn how to box and drop some of this muscle and size, and I'll be fast enough to box him. That's, That's his theory. That's his theory. Ever said. <laughs> so we've discovered that Anthony Joshua is also dumb as a box of rocks, and <laughs> he will soon be sweeping up the plantation for Eddie Hearn shortly. Well, he's but he's got Canelo. That's his new girlfriend. Been... Anyway, uh, Miguel. How do you feel about Yusuk Joshua the rematch? Um, well, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I definitely don't feel confident that uh, that Joshua will come out, you know, with the W. Uh, I would oh, like you were to so see. So confident before. Uh, so so right, confident. So, right, exactly. You, you know it. Um, but I'm not gonna I, ever I, let you I forget because def- I'm the only one who picked <laughs> Yusuk. Um, but. Um, I think I would have to see who his he's going to be training with to at least have some sort of inclination in one one direction or the other. Be like, okay, he has a shot, or like, no, no, wrong How about fucking a complete idea. Curveball. Mike Tyson decides to train him. Oh, Tyson's not a good trainer. I don't think he's a good. Trainer. No, I'll tell you why it would work. That style with the numbering and the punching system and the memorization of punch sequences might work for a guy who's wired like that. 
it's actually a pretty good fit. Anthony if, Joshua is not Mike Tyson, yeah, though. He doesn't. I, I mean, he, the explosion, the explosiveness, nowhere near. Yeah. I mean, if if anything, What's like we, we talked about doing? it before. Oh yeah, what the fuck is he doing? Um, if anything, it would be the 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 fury, you know, type of of uh, game plan when he leans on you and he gets you tired. I mean, he he has to use his weight against Usyk. He has to. He's not a, the better boxer. He's not faster, and his ring IQ is nowhere near Usyk's. He's gonna have to use his basically his physical gifts, is his strength, his uh, his height, you know, his strength. He has to basically lean on him, get him tired, fucking make it an ugly fight if you need to, you know, do some punches to the hips or something. No, he's gonna get smaller and faster. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, like, what the fuck? He's going I, the I, opposite I, direction of what he should be doing. Right, he should be getting right. bigger and meaner and uglier and more ripped. And yeah, swat and, him and around just be like, ring. you know what? I'm not gonna. I mean, we saw him in the last round, in the last round, yeah, in the last round for the with the Kinsusik. He was running out of gas, like, mate, dude, just you know what? If you're gonna go in there, dude, go in there and just blow your wad for the first ten, you know, four rounds. Fuck it. If he's gonna whip your ass, it's gonna be a chance are it's gonna be later on in the fight. At the very least, go out there guns blazing the first four or five rounds and hope to knock the motherfucker out because you're not gonna last the, the twelve. But I mean, it's just. It, this is already. I would like to see who the hell he's going to train. Who's going to be his trainer? I think that would be the first. You should thing. get Goosen. I, I, I've been thinking about it since oh, we geez. sat here. Goosen. I think he'd be a Goosen guy. Uh, Have him go I, out and throw a thousand punches with unreal <laughs> cardio. The uh, reason uh, why I, you don't see all these American trainers throwing their names in in the hat to get Anthony Joshua is because mentally he might be broken, and I think they know that, Lee. Anthony Joshua, when he gets hit, he reacts, and it's not good. Um, he, he's uh, he's just it mentally, he, gets, he gets spooked. He gets spooked, fight, you know. Yeah, the last fight with Usyk, it looked like every time he got hit mm -hmm. on the chin, he was reacting to it. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, get a guy out of that. Either you have it or you don't. It seems like Anthony Joshua mentally might not be right for for this level. Right. He might have been right for that one fight versus the Klitschko that was ready to exit the ring. But but uh, since Andy Ruiz, it seems like the guy does not like getting punched on the chin anymore. And uh, you in this heavyweight division, all these trainers know that you're going to get touched at a certain point. And I, I just maybe for a payday, if he comes asking, they'll do it. But I, I don't see too many American trainers like, hey, I want to train Anthony Joshua. He's the next big thing. You just don't see that kind of. Uh, um, desire to, to get in the, the training with this guy. There you go. Let's do a little bit of rapid fire here at the end. Uh, Regis Progre uh, signs with Pro Bellum, his official world. I want to work for a piece of shit like Richard Schaefer. <laughs> uh, that's really all I have on that story, and I don't, there's no follow up to it. Amir Khan admits he's training through aches and pains focused to beat Brooke. That really doesn't deserve comment because we beat that into the ground, but that's the least of your problems, dude. I mean, the whatever. Uh, Caleb Plant is probably the next biggest story. Caleb Plant is going to target Jermel, Jermal, whichever, Charlo, and views him as easy work. Well, Caleb's coming back. Let's start with the scrap meter. Oh, scrap meter, Charlo mm -hmm. Plant. Uh, absolutely not, no. Hold on, which which Charlo is this? This is the middleweight Jamal. Charlo, right? Jamal. The one that, but the one that's Jamal? that's a middle. Jamal. Does it matter? Well, They're I mean, the like same fighter. I guess I'm. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess they kind of technically are. Uh, yeah, th this one. Um, I mean, hey, you know what? Plant against another name, I'll fucking take it. You know, I mean, that's how thirsty we are for these fucking PBC guys to fight other big names, you know, in the in the divisions or, or near the division. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that we've been wanting to fucking see, you know, seeing Caleb Plant fight guys like uh, like Benavidez and, and other uh, other top quote unquote top PBC dudes because they're not going to go elsewhere. We already know that. So uh, hey, I, I this is this is something. I mean, it's just you know giving us crumbs really but it's something i wouldn't mind seeing this fight I, I don't see it being that good of a fight i i'm not sure i mean i i, I didn't i don't really know who the fuck would win it honestly I, i'm leaning towards charlo already but uh I, I wouldn't mind seeing it you know hey plant against another you know decent name finally fuck let's do it uh andrew are you interested in plant charlo um yes no. Yes, what? no, no, that's a good fight. Look, it's about time these guys try to face mm -hmm. each other. And obviously, 
they're doing this now with Caleb because he already had his big moment. He lost. It was by knockout. No one even remembers nor cares. So now a Al Heyman will use him like he's Robert Guerrero. So yeah, he's, he's going to go face all the other guys now and get his name thrown with all the other PBC fighters. Lee, is this the same Charlo that's linked to Canelo though? Now who knows? Well, They're I think same. it is. That, that's Let's why just, I was asking that earlier. Just unanimously just say Charlo. Well, there, there's a 154 Charlo, right, who's supposed to be fighting that Constano dude, the, the, the Spanish oh, guy. Oh, that's right. right. That's so right. Yeah, yeah, that guy. So this, so this has to be the middleweight one. Yeah, so in that case, uh, he's not going to fight Plant. They're probably going to go. If Canelo yeah. is, they're, mm -hmm. they're saying Canelo now is not looking at going up to cruiserweight. Um he, he's possibly going to stay at super middleweight and fight Charlo in May. Yeah, which, which actually makes sense. I mean, considering the PBC guys are like this, now that Caleb understands that Charlo is probably off the table because he's going to go up against uh, Canelo, and now he's calling them out. Now he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Now that he's already got, you know, a potential fight, uh, um, Charlo, I mean, a potential fight with, with fucking Canelo, now plant is saying, yes, 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 let's make the fight. Um, come on, bro. You should have yeah. called him out before all this shit. Yep. There you go. Uh, moving forward, uh, George Cambosos eyes his return, and he wants to fight in Australia. I think Cambosos has earned every right to fight wherever the fuck he wants, and if he wants to fight in front of everybody who's got COVID in Australia, I think you should fight a nobody on top of it. They're talking about a bunch of names, yada, yada, yada. Uh, what do you think? Should he turn around and come back with a big fight in Australia? I start with you, Miguel. Um, well, I, I would like to see what names they're talking about first and foremost. But let's see what uh, they're saying. Yeah, because um, I mean, like, I, I you he's know, got a I, mandatory challenger. Uh huh. Uh, Cambosis was the IBF mandatory. Okay, so yeah, they're talking about a weight class that's got everybody in it. It's got Haney, Lomachenko, yeah. Davis, and Ryan Garcia, but none of those names are mentioned. Uh, there are no names mentioned in the article whatsoever. So okay. I would almost right. say definitively he's fighting a cab driver from yeah. probably shout out to Sam Navajero and his gelato Terrio, uh, probably Sam Navajero. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, I mean, why not? Why not? You know, he, he's earned it. You know, we, we understand sometimes they got to do these fights, right? It's like, I got to come home, just make sure it's not an opponent who's too, too dangerous. You know, it's Sam it happens, Navajero. A, it happens a couple of times. I keep throwing the same right. name out there. <laughs> yeah. Might as well. And then, you know, the winner gets some gelato or something. But right. it, it's yeah, like, named you know, after him. They could have Cambosos Kumquat or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I put in a no name in there with him. Uh, somebody who can be just a kind of like, hey, welcome home, champ. You know, put on the show for us. Nothing too dangerous. Just show your, your you know, have one of these kind of fights, uh, a yield drum, so to speak. Those kind of fights. It's like, all right, fuck it. Let's have one of those here. Welcome home, champ. And then the next one, he'll have a more difficult opponent. I guess you guys can all guess right now, if anybody can hear the wheels in my head spinning, going, are you going to title the show George Cambosos versus <laughs> Sam Navajero and then try to figure out how to get a fighter pose out of Sam? Now, I don't have to try hard. He's an MC and he's already got pictures of himself in the ring. This is actually the easiest cover photo I've ever had to do for one of our episodes. Um, Andrew, are you excited about Sam Navajero versus George Cambosos in May? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lee, very excited. It's a 50 50 fight. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. This is your big shot, Sam. This is your big shot. Oh my God, big I'm it's so big excited break. about this fight. Let's talk about this weekend because we have boxing on uh, the weekend coming up on the 15th. Joe Smith, who was originally going to fight Callum Johnson, he's no longer fighting Callum Johnson, is he? Uh, Miguel, he's got the COVID. <laughs> oh, shit, is he? Yeah, yeah. I I've been kind so of out He's of now the fighting a car crash. Oh. I don't get the Joe Smith thing. I, I suspect it's because he's white and he's from a white place and he brings in white fans, which is important for promoters to have a white fighter because uh, we're getting closer to St. Patrick's Day, right? So mm. you got to start building up your white fighters so that they can get paid on, you know. Come on, Lee. He's a little bit better than that. It's... Why do you say that every year? And then on the card, you got Spike O'Sullivan fighting in Boston against a dude. No, I'm saying from Joe Smith. Joe Smith is a little bit better than than uh, just some white guy they're putting on a card. 
what has he done that's made you believe that his WBO light heavyweight title is something special, Andrew? <laughs> what do you mean? Joe Smith. Who's he I mean, yeah, he, it's not a he killer retired record. Charles Hopkins. How about that? Let's start with that. He retired him. He knocked yeah, his ass out of the ring. Yeah, but wasn't he already retired at the time? No, he wasn't. Actually, I Bernard mean, was beating people up all the way until Joe Smith, to be I'm, honest with you. Okay. Um, and we're, you know, are we still blaming the largest living fat ass landmass for putting that fight together? Hey, good knowledge there, Lee. Yeah, no, he did put that. Fight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then he, and then he, he fucking walked around telling everyone he put that fight together only for that to happen. Yes, that was a very up and down moment for uh, for uh, Dan Rayfield there. The yes, best sir. part of the Dan Rayfield story is now that he is like the literal fourth tier internet reporter who can't get anybody to read his stories anymore at all. All he gets now are press passes. I don't know how he makes any money on boxing whatsoever without ESPN. I don't know. I don't know what uh, how he fucked up such. A, and my only guess, and Dan, if you're listening, and I know you are, you're an asshole. And everybody's generally afraid of you because they felt that you were some kind of boxing royalty. And it's 2022. I'm, I'm going to say it because I'm proud of myself. I'm no longer afraid of Dan Rayfield. You're a bully and a fat fuck. <laughs> I just wanted to say it. It's 2022. I've waited long enough, Andrew. I mean, I've really held my tongue for literally the last 14 years about Dan Rayfield. I think now is the time to just call it like I see it. You are the fattest fucking piece of fucking filth with a bad fucking attitude and the fact that there is a woman that would have sex with you is the most astonishing fact it's in life. It's 2022, Lee. It's 2022. I haven't gone on a full rant about him in at least a year, Andrew. At least. At least. It's been at That's least a year. Insane. We're going back to 2020? Come on, let it... Well, let I was drinking then too, so I admit let to bygones that. Bygones be bygones, no. <laughs> All right, we'll let it go. Never mind. We'll say, we'll Dan, say you look great. It looks like you lost five pounds. Good luck with that internet thing you got going. Uh, <laughs> Joe Smith fighting this weekend. Andrew, are you excited to see him uh, back on ESPN? Uh, yeah, to, to finish off with Joe Smith, um, I think that the thing everyone likes about Joe Smith is almost every fight that he's in, he's always the underdog. He's never the guy looked at really as, as, uh, as the favorite. And yet he always wins. He wins in exciting fights and most of the time by knockouts. So that's what he has going for him. Um, you know, there's even been talks about even Canelo stepping up maybe to light heavyweight and facing him before taking on Bevel or any of the other guys. So all he has to do is keep winning and and eventually, yeah, he's, he's going to score another big fight. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not, listen, Lee, the COVID thing, Dropping the real opponent. Now this is a, a, you know, just a step in fighter. No, I'm not excited about that at all. This should be a one sided beat down by Joe Smith and we move on with his career. Uh, there you go. Miguel Antonio Barragan, how do you feel? Um, well, I'm, I'm just thirsty for some boxing at this point. It's like, I, I just want to wow. see it already. You know, don't like, get thirsty I, anymore in 2022. No? <laughs> Please don't. Uh... Please don't. You're not 15. That's no, that's that's uh, I'm trying to be with the with the cool. How many how the, many of your cool kids say kids. thirsty, Andrew? How many of them? All of them? <laughs> I, I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. I just renamed show. the show again. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Don't stop me. Meg is thirsty Cambosos for Joe Smith, Jr. Thirsty thirsty to fight for <laughs> Sam Navajero. <laughs> Please let there uh, be a thirsty emoji. Please. <laughs> Oh, that was yeah. good. What I'm trying that to say good. is I want some fights already. We haven't had any UFC cards thirsty, in the last couple bro. of weeks. <laughs> I said, yes, I said it. <laughs> what you, from the from the dude, I saw Little John last night. I mean, what's next? Skeet, skeet, skeet from the from the wall to the wall. Skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> that, that's, Woo, kinda, I'm telling you, I, I, I gotta keep the show, the show hip. Generally flat till we got here at the end, and it was Miguel that shall lead me out of the wilderness with the jokes. <laughs> My, oh, my, oh, my. Hey, real fast. Did you guys see the young man in Dubai that fell to his knees when Floyd Mayweather uh, went in front of him? Oh, hell no. No, I didn't see this. 
A man fell to his knees in Dubai and started praising Floyd, saying that right under his God was Floyd Mayweather. And he couldn't <laughs> believe that Floyd was in his presence and how he was the greatest thing under his God. They okay, even so should we do that? Like next time we go to a fight, we just fall to the ground and lay flat in front of him like he's Allah. It, it reminded me of coming to America. Remember when the guy, yes. when the guy was, uh, Eddie Murphy's pitcher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then he's crying. He can barely stand up. Floyd's like, come on, dude, get yourself together. He's like, oh, you're my God. You're my God. Or no, you're under my God or something. Even his friends are like, bro, don't say that. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> it was a real pathetic moment. Let, suicide watch for that young man. But then, did I you don't, guys? I think we should have Lion King music for him when he shows up. Like that's how he sees himself. Like there should be that. Ah, da, da, da. Like he. Another he, thing, I, I think Floyd Mayweather really didn't think through is when he met, I guess, uh, the the rich man. I don't know what you call them, sultans. What do you call these guys? Sheik, Whatever sheiks, they're no, sheiks. No, or no. Sheiks, yeah, sheik, yeah. Shake. Was he a shake or he, sheik? Had, he had two diamond um, dog tags. He was wearing oh, two geez. diamond. I, I just didn't get a real tags. good look wow. over in Dubai. I was like, oh, man, do they really want to see that? Wow. Isn't that yeah. everything they hate? <laughs> yeah, about America, like the, the flamboyance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, everything, they, it's everything way, I hate about way America. Way to Let's to be honest. That's us. what I hate about white people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I know that Caleb Plant exists with a gold chain around his neck somewhere talking <laughs> like a wigger. I mean, what – I. I don't even know if you're allowed to say that. Are you allowed to say when a white guy acts like a black guy? Like he, he wears trucker hats, so there's no way he could. He, he's only a white guy because he wears trucker hats. You don't know, remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Who was the dipshit that said this? Someone tweeted that out. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> Boxingtonight.io. Follow us on all the social media platforms. If you're watching the video, go listen to the audio. If you're listening to the audio, go watch the video. We do both each and every week. They're available at the website, boxingtonight.io. Uh, everybody on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and the thirsty fans on the YouTube. How'd I do, Miguel? Did I use it correctly in a sentence? That, that, uh, you did quite well, yes. Feel free to like and subscribe and get more uh, Fight Net Radio on the Boxing Tonight platform. Boxingtonight.io, where you can get all the latest episodes, find different ways to listen or watch us, as well as all the boxing news that's not covered on any of the other websites. It's a -a one-of-a-kind boxing news site that actually pulls from local news feeds uh, throughout the world. It's a -a very one-of-a-kind news feed that doesn't happen anywhere else. Nobody seems to care about it. The only reason people are going to the website is for the schedule, which we do have. The month of January is currently posted. Feel free to go and check it out. That'll do it for this week. We'll get back to a regular rotation now that it's the beginning of the year. As always, we do appreciate every single one of you uh, that has listened. Uh, We had an incredible watch-through rate for the uh, year-end show. We appreciate it. And remarkably, the the lack of negative comments, I think, was my favorite part. Like, nobody actually wrote anything crappy for a change when we actually had a big put out. So thank you, everybody who continues to watch and listen. Uh, we have another big year planned for you. And uh, that'll do it. We will talk to you guys next week. Skeet, skeet, skeet. <laughs>